an important message from Youth Fountain Laboratory, makers of Vasoflux and Vasoflux for Men. If you're over the age of 35 and over the years you've eaten pizza, dairy foods, deli meats, or meats with fat, you are likely to have some degree of plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. This increases your risk of suffering a stroke or heart attack exponentially, and no one wants such a catastrophic event to occur. Introducing Plaqueout. Plaqueout is made of all natural ingredients proven to help. Dissolve clots in the blood. Remove calcium deposits and plaque from the walls of veins and arteries. Improve viscosity of the blood. Improve elasticity of the veins and arteries. Treat varicose veins. And prevent the reoccurrence of plaque buildup. For more information, visit Youth Fountain Laboratory at youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856. And remember, to help unclog veins and arteries, get the plaque out. Today's feature in the early 2000s was expected to enter the league and change the game for traditional fours and fives. In the 1998 high school class, he was a top five recruit that reportedly even had a chance to go straight to the NBA. Instead, he entered college and showed a glimpse of what the hype was all about. League executives saw the potential in him and one team even made him the number two overall pick in the draft. From then on, things took a turn, and by the end of his playing career, many today call him a bust. Was he? Was it all his fault? What were some things that may have happened to cause him to finish his career averaging just eight points a game and four boards and out of the league by just 29 years old when the ceiling for him was a potential 2010 guy and 15 plus year career? Well, let's talk about it. The Stro Show. Strohmile Emmanuel Swift, born November 21st, 1979. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth. Ash, get it, man. Strohmile Swift was a 6'10 power forward slash center from Shreveport, Louisiana, and by his senior year in high school, towered above his area's competition on his way to being named a McDonald's All American. Swift was a very intriguing prospect in that he was not only tall, but extremely athletic and had a high motor up to that point. It's not usual to see a guy at that size be able to jump and move his body this way, so scouts understandably kept a close eye on his next moves waiting for his draft decision. Swift, along with his mother, knew that mentally he wasn't ready for the NBA, and so he was encouraged to take his time and spend a few years in college before making the jump. For Stromile, choosing a college program was easy. What's the biggest school near my hometown that can also prepare me for the league? Whatever it is, that's where I'm going. He decided on LSU and by his sophomore season, led his team to the Sweet 16 and averaged 16 points a game and eight rebounds. Stun number one, Brittle. Being a big in basketball is not an easy task. Of course it has its perks like being able to naturally dominate 90% of other players because of your giant-like physical gifts, but being that size sometimes means you're more prone to injury, having much larger target areas, or because of your rapid growth, certain bones and ligaments don't develop the strength they need for a rigorous sport like basketball. Swift, at 6'10", was an eye-opener at LSU because he was not only bigger than most fours and fives, but because he also had a high motor and an aggression to his game that you'd want from your enforcer position. No one wants to bang down low for an entire game with a guy that's never tired and not only jumps over you for dunks, but celebrates his dunks like he's a cash money millionaire every time. I got kids, I dog. responsibilities. I have four kids. Dude, I have two white kids, dog. Straight up white kids. And I know they're a lot more fucking expensive to take care of than for Mexico. Stromile Swift had it all up to the point of him entering the NBA draft, except one thing. He couldn't stay healthy long enough to see his full potential. In 2000, the Vancouver Grizzlies took Swift with the second overall pick behind Kenyon Martin in a draft class that's considered one of the worst in league history. Out of the 14 guys drafted lottery that year, all but Jamal Crawford, you can consider a bust. Aside from that, 
he was taken by one of the worst teams in the league at the time. There was room for Stromile to grow and become the player he envisioned himself being, but in typical Stromile Swift form, he got injured at the most inopportune time. In his rookie season, he struggled to get playing time with Sharif Abdurrahim, Brian Reeves, Othella Harrington, and more competing for minutes in or around his position. He averaged just 5 points and 3 rebounds that year in 16 minutes a game. The organization, upon drafting Swift, told him that his second year would be his year to shine, and were looking to make that promise a reality by trading Abdul Rahim for the rights to Pau Gasol on draft night, opening the door for Swift. But due to an injury early in his second season, that door would be shut forever. Stunt number two, Pau Gasol's early ascendance. Hola, soy Pau Gasol, juego los Memphis Grizzlies y bueno, bien, uh, bienvenidos a la NBA en Canal Plus. Many that remember the graceful Spaniard may remember his all-star years in LA alongside Kobe Bryant winning back-to-back -back championships. But what many don't remember is that Gasol was also a beast in his earlier days with the Memphis Grizzlies. Beast as in winning Rookie of the Year, averaging 18 points a game and 9 rebounds. It came as a shock to a lot of people that the 21-year-old Pau Gasol, who was drafted as the third pick in the NBA draft, immediately became one of the best power forwards maybe ever. It was great for the organization, who won 50 games by Pau's third year, but unlucky for Swift, who because of an injury, missed just enough games to begin the season that allowed Pau Gasol to come in and show what he could do. Gasol's value immediately showed, and upon Swift's return, he never was able to get that luster back. As the season went on and Stromile got more and more healthy, he would begin to play a lot better and actually had the best season of his career that year, but to no avail, because Pau Gasol, in just his rookie year, was having almost twice a better season, capped off by winning the Rookie of the Year and looking like a guy the team could seriously build around. Stromile, by that point, was showing signs that he wasn't the best at picking up NBA schemes or had high-valued IQ outside of dunking, opposed to what most coaches wanted in a player like Pau Gasol, whom his IQ is like an arm or a leg, it's just always there. Swift, in the next three seasons, would lose that potential that everyone saw in him, and eventually, along with Gasol's improvement, he just wasn't a hot commodity anymore. After the 2004-2005 season where he played in just 60 games, which not playing a full season was the norm for him, he decided to leave Memphis and sign with the Rockets, who would trade him back to Memphis the very next year after failing to live up to expectations. In his return to his original team, he'd begin to clash with coach Mark Ivoroni, who eventually insisted the Grizzlies trade Swift, which in 2008, they did. Stunt number three, outside dunking. The third and final stunt in my eyes for Stromile Swift was that outside of dunking, he really didn't bring much else to the table, and that made him more of a sideshow that happened once a game, maybe. It's obvious Swift took pride in his athleticism, and maybe too much to where it's also obvious he didn't spend much time developing anything else. I mean, like anything. Outside shot? Hell no. Rebounding? Nah, it was aight. IQ? Nah. Passing? Hell no. Free throws? No sir. Great locker room guy? Reportedly not. At least if you ask Mark Ivoroni. Sometimes you see a player in the gym and he's over there throwing the ball off the wall to a windmill, 360 over another guy's head, doing crazy dunks you only imagine. Then you think, well, I guess he's done now. He's taking his shoes off. When is he going to work on something else? That's Stroh Miles Swift as a player, in my opinion. A highlight show that didn't really offer anything else outside of that, and at times sending your stuff to the second row. In the NBA, if you want longevity, it takes a little more than those skills. He would go on to play for a few more NBA teams and a stint in China, but by then, no one really cared. 
All in all, Stroh Miles Swift, much like the 2000 draft class for the most part, were lackluster in their performance in the league, and it's disappointing to see someone with so much talent not reach his full potential. He would leave basketball in 2009 and would have his personal trials and tribulations that made national news, but as a basketball player, many really wanted more of the Stroh Show, and unfortunately, it never aired, if you will. Salute to him, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out. Also, if you have some time, I'm inviting you to check out the new website. Many have been asking for a cash app or how they can support the channel. Honestly, you watching the video and getting to this point of it is more than enough. But if you want to go the extra mile and get some pretty cool gear at the same time, new winter hoodies have just been released. It's a part of a project I'm working on, all original designs. For now, there's the gold tips along with the red and black. A play on words that exalt the game we all know and love. Stunnergrowth3.com if you want to get some gear and show some support. It's your boy JC Stunnergrowth. I'm really out this time. Chill!